Hi, this is Joel A. Erickson and Nate Atkins from the Indy Star here at day nine of Colts practice. Gardner Minshew took the first team reps today. They've been going back and forth. We still don't really have a great idea of who's going to start the game. Shane Steichen doesn't really want to give that up. Uh, we'll see if maybe he gives it up on Thursday, but we'll keep trying. You might have to wait until you might find out when I find out, you know, on, on Saturday when I'm sitting in, in Buffalo, you might find out that, you know, one guy is taking the first team reps, but we're, we don't have that yet. Uh, one notable thing from today, uh, maybe the most notable thing, depending on how you look at it, Jonathan Taylor not here. Yeah, he was out today. They said it was just related to treatment for the ankle that he's still working through. It's an ankle that they are saying the same one he injured last season. He hasn't had a new injury on it. He hasn't had a setback on it in any football setting. And he had surgery on it in January, which, you know, I had a source say that that's supposed to be a two to four week recovery timetable. So a lot of things are very confusing with Jonathan right now as far as the health and obviously the, the contract status is hanging out there. And uh, but the interesting thing was Shane Sykin said that he hopes that he'll be back in training camp, which doesn't sound like a coach who's in that much control. Yeah, I, he, he'd like to see him out here. Um, it's it's really kind of coming down to the wire, though, on that. There's that. I think there's only four more sessions after today that happen out here at Grand Park. Obviously, you know, they they could get him in Philadelphia uh, against the Eagles if they wanted to. But the, the, the time is running short in terms of getting him out here on the field in Grand Park. Now, in terms of getting him ready for the regular season, the time's not really that short. There, there is a little bit more time for that. Um, but I was talking to DeAndre Smith yesterday, and he said, I was trying to get it, figure out like how much he thought the running backs needed to play. He kind of said it's case by case. Yeah, it's it's interesting because they just you know brought in Kenyon Drake recently in the past week. So you'd like to see how he fits in some of the scheme. And, and there's young players that just need to play some football. Evan Hull has never played any kind of NFL-style game. So it, I guess the bright side of, of this situation is it does give opportunities for those different guys to see how they fit in offense, at least when Anthony Richardson's out there, has been – very different as far as you know the RPO looks and, and the quarterback run element to it. So it'll at least be kind of interesting to see. And and they need to get Taylor out there also because the running backs are getting hurt. Zach Moss has a broken arm. Um, probably won't be back until the beginning of the regular season. Deion Jackson was out today. That's that's the top three guys in the depth chart right there, not practicing. They obviously they did bring in Kenyon Drake, but this running back situation just keeps getting. Uh, thinner and thinner uh, with each passing week. Uh, there's a practice on Thursday, and then it's up to Buffalo for the first preseason game. We will try to see if we can get uh, a hint on who's going to start that game. If not, you just have to turn on your TVs and find out with the rest of us. For the Indy Star, I'm Joel A. Erickson. This is Nate Atkins. All right, this grass is nice in here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah, this is part of his rehab process. If you guys don't see him out here, it's part of his rehab. Is he rehabbing here on site or somewhere else? Yeah, like I'll, I'll refrain from getting into that. But yeah. Do you expect what, what him back it? tomorrow? Or? Yeah, if you if you don't see him back here out on the field, it's because he's rehabbing. So what is his health status? I mean, what, cause it's yeah, a yeah, he's got an ankle and he's rehabbing his ankle. And like I said, once the medical cl uh, staff clears him and he's 100, percent he'll, he's he'll be out on practice. Has there close? been much progress? Do you feel? Yeah, I think he's in, in a good spot, and we're going from there. Do you think he'll practice during camp? Uh, I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. We'll see how it all plays out, though. Again, once he's cleared, he'll be out here. Shane, how much you didn't want to get into? It? Not much, apparently. But is this the original injury, the original surgery, or did you do something? Else? Yeah, he's just he's got the ankle. It's the ankle. Yeah. Shane, yep. any plan yet for Saturday in terms of how much? You'll play we're going to talk through that uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's players' day off, so we're going to talk through that, and then into Thursday too. Want to play the starters? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at that. We're looking at that for sure. That's starters definitely a possibility. Any, meaning Rip Anthony. He needs to play. Yeah, all those guys are going to play. Yes, yeah, we got to get him out there and play him. Yeah. What, what uh, did you, you went with the, the situation at the end of the four minute thing? Not exactly what you wanted to see the end results. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was 2:40 left. You know, we had two timeouts. We were on defense. The defense had to get a stop. Offense had to get one first down. You know, we went three groups. Defense, you know, got the stop on the first two, and then offense, you know, converted on the last one. But uh, got to finish the game there offensively. But good job by the defense. You Great job. Rodney Thomas is dealing with. Yeah, he has a toe. He has a toe, yeah. So most new coaches go with assistant coaches who they, they've got, exper got experience with. What did you see in Tony Sperano Jr. that impressed you? Because you don't go back with him, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. No, I, uh, I interviewed a good handful of guys, um, and the detail that he talked about in that interview and his passion for the game uh, and his knowledge for the game was off the charts. Um, and it was a long, grueling interview uh, with him. Shoot, it was about six, seven hours. And, uh, you know, within, you know, about two and a half hours into it, and I kind of looked back at 
Jim Bob and was like, this was the dude. You know, um, just the way he talked, the way he saw the run game, this, the way he saw the protections, just the way how clean and concise and how quick of a thinker he was, um, was very impressive. And he's been tremendous so far for us. I know you don't get into scheme schematics, but yeah. how different will it be for the offensive line when you've got a quarterback who can run and you do more RPOs? Yeah, I mean, it definitely opens up your offense, right? I mean, you got a guy that can do a whole bunch of different things. Um, it puts a lot of stress on the defense. Um, so... You know, we're always looking at different ways to do different things offensively. Uh, whatever we can, you know, we feel that can put our guys in the best position to make plays. That's what we're going to try and do. Um, we're still working through that. That one, we'll see. Yeah. Anthony, Anthony's um, his experience has been talked about, lack of experience has been talked about a lot. But uh, when a guy maybe doesn't have the same level of experience as some of these other highly drafted quarterbacks, and you get him in this kind of environment, how does the progression or how does the development tend to come? I mean, is it different? Is it, do you see him learn? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, you know, you obviously learning the system is a big part of it, you know, and getting comfortable with the guys. I mean, you guys have heard me say this before, but just the repetitions and doing the same things over and over again and getting different looks. We might run the same concept, but we get a different look from the defense. Well, now our eyes got to become quicker to the next read. Um, so, you know, it's been good for him to get all these reps. And then obviously in the preseason, he's going to see a different scheme, you know, and then next week in Chicago, we'll see a little different thing. So it'll be good for him to see all the different looks and, and just keep keep growing and staying consistent and uh, uh, staying within the system and, and playing good ball. So like, I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is your is your approach in coaching a player like that any different when they're experienced? Level? Yeah, I think with the quarterback, just my philosophy on the quarterback is like, I, I don't like to like if they screw up, like I'm not jumping like those guys like crazy. I mean, they got it so much. It's the hardest you know position in sports to play. You know, it's a day by day process. Those guys are going to make mistakes just like everyone else is. But I think the growth uh, from understanding the game and what we're trying to get done and coach them in the right way, talk to them in the right way, because all guys, you know, you coach, you can't coach every guy the same. You know what I mean? So uh, that's a big process of it. And we work through that every day on the practice field, in the meeting rooms, going through cut-ups, different looks uh, to get them in the right direction. Last one here. Staff, how do you evaluate practice compared to the joint practice compared to the preseason? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I, I think you take everything into account. Um, I, 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 the joint practices are really good, you know, because that's a, a bulk of, you know, you know, when you have those double joint practices, you know, it's sometimes you don't play the starters as much, you know, in those preseason games, you get a double joint, but you treat the joint practices like a game, you know what I mean? You get all these different looks from different teams. And then the preseason, same thing. It's just another, you know, way for us to get eyes on these guys and get them in game action because it's different than being on the practice field. You got fans in the crowd, you know, and, and uh, we go from there. But pretty similar uh, in that regard, but they're, they, all, they, all, they all got their place. Great. Thank you. Good all right. Thanks, guys. How y'all doing? Good. Nick, heading into year two, how do you feel uh, compared to last year during camp and just obviously getting an opportunity to get ready for the um, you know, every day, every day, every opportunity is an opportunity to get better, um, opportunity to be more consistent, more disciplined. Uh, last year, obviously, I was a rookie coming in, trying to learn the playbook. This year, year two in uh, Coach Gus' system, and, you know, more reps come, more comfortability, and more, you know, you know more, you're able to do more, able to help the team more. So, you know, it's definitely a little different than last year, just, you know, coming in with more familiarity to the scheme. and. More familiar, familiar no, no, to the NFL and being able to just go out there and have fun, make plays. Gus mentioned that, you know, there has been just a, a, I guess, better attentiveness throughout like walking practice and stuff like that. So how have you seen yourself go in the area of COVID team? Uh, just living the moment, take it day by day. I'm um, not looking too far down the road, you know. Take it every day, one day at a time, one practice at a time, one walk through at a time, one rep, one play call. Um, just read your keys and give high effort. Let the chips fall where they may. Gus said you've been moving around a little bit. You can play a little bit of nickel. What's that experience like for you? Oh, it's fun. I mean, you know, I shout out my coaches back in college, Coach Baker, for, you know, teaching me that stuff, you know, and you know, a little bit of carryover into the NFL. Um, just, you know, pride myself on being versatile, being able to go fill different roles, fill different responsibilities, be able to play them at a high level. Is it different? perspective though when you're in the like that? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I told Kenny, I was like, you know, after playing Nickel, I was like, man, I was like, you know, it gives a new appreciation. Uh, you know, you watch him do it. It's like, oh, you know, but then you go out there and do it yourself. It's like, whoa, like, you know, it's a lot of stuff he has on his plate. And, you know, even free safety, strong safety, you know, give you a little appreciation. Also, you know, gives you an idea of what everybody else has to do. So when you're back there in a certain position, 
you know what Kenny has, you know what Rod T has, you know what Julian has. It allows you to play faster, it allows you to play a little smarter and know what you can and can't do. Has your weight changed at all since last year at this time, with bolts up at all? About the same. Nick, there's a lot of young guys in the secondary. What have you seen from those guys? Uh, everybody's out there eager to learn, eager to play, um, super competitive, a um, little edgy group. Uh, I feel like, you know, every day we're making strides to get better. Every day we're coming in, you know, like I said, one day at a time, trying to be consistent, trying to be disciplined and, you know, learn the playbook. And, you know, the big thing is just executing, you know, make sure you're in your spot, reading your keys. And when the ball's in the air, go make it a play. How much does going up against a guy like Anthony help you guys? Oh, that's good. You know, Anthony brings a different level, you know, a different, you know, side to the game, you know, it's, you know, 6'5", 250, um, you know, runs 4'4", four, four. Um, just be able to go out there and throw the ball 70 yards down the field, you know, someone you have to prepare for, bring your A game with every day. Um, he can throw the ball, you know, tuck it and run, and, you know, when he runs, it's not just, you know, did everybody go run, you know, you got to make sure you come up because, you know, he got a little quickness to him too, so you just got to go and, you know, play him like a, you know, a quarterback, play him like a running back, like a receiver. And you know, go out there and just give it your best. Can you notice the difference in the communication aspect of playing strong safety in this defense from last year to this year? Uh, it's the same defense, but you know, I realize you know strong safety has a lot in their play. You know, a lot of communication between the linebackers, the safeties, corners, you know, the D line. You know, you communicate with every level of the of the defense, and it requires you to know what you're doing, know how to do it. Not only know what you're doing, but know what everybody else is doing as well, so that you're able to help everybody else. Is that just easier now that you're you're not only settled in year two in the defense, but like you're settled here in Indianapolis, like you just like know where you're going, you know everyone's names, like you're not like swimming like a lot of rookies do. Oh uh, yeah, I mean you know like I said, year two in the defense, you know it's a lot more comfortable. Um, you know you know the calls from last year. Now it's just you know instead of football one on one last year, you know it's football two on one, three on one, four on one. You know not just knowing what you have, but what everybody else has, so you can play faster and go out there and make plays. What'd you learn from Dell and Rodney McLeod last year and kind of carry with you just going into your team? Rodney hates us, but back in what, what was it, 2015? I was a camper at his, his, at his uh, Rodney McLeod camp, so it tells how old he is and how young I am. Um, but, you know, he's definitely, you know, a true pro, um, the way he prepares, the way he wakes up, goes about his business, the way he studies, the way he prepares, the way he plays the game, the way he recovers. So. Definitely just, you know, following him around last year, you know, seeing what he did, you know, I still keep in contact with him, because, you know, one to matter. But, you know, definitely still keep in contact with somebody like that. You know, just overall a great guy, someone who, you know, when things were going away, you know, just kept a positive attitude, you know, handled things professionally, you know, didn't let his emotions get the best of him, and, you know, still walked in with a smile on his face. And, you know, day in, day out, was just consistent in everything he did. You don't call him old when you see him later down the line this season? I don't call him old. I mean, it's just an understanding that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what would constitute yeah. success for you from this, this weekend for season? Uh, just continuing to get better every day. You know, that's it. You know, making sure you get more and more comfortable in the defense. You know, it's the first time going live. Um, you know, but just going out there, having fun, knowing the play call, communicating, playing with high effort, high energy. That's, you know, that's what constitutes success. Last one. Pads on is one thing, live is a different thing, especially for the defense. How excited are you to not kind of have to let up a little bit on like a 50-50 ball where you can really lay into somebody when you guys are playing the body left? Um, it feels good. You know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, every day for me, I treat every day the same, whether it's practice game, you know, got to go out there with the same mentality. You go out there every day to get better, one rep at a time, one play at a time. And at the end of the day, you know, it's fun. You know, you've been playing around with your, your teammates for the past two, two, three weeks. So to be able to go out there against another opponent will be a whole lot of fun, and you know we'll see where the chips where the chips lay. Smell weird in here, though. <laughs> How's it feel to just get back out there, be, be be on the field after waiting a little bit? Man, I'm I'm blessed, dog. Uh, every time I don't get to play this game, it, it's definitely uh, sad for me because like I love this game so much, you know, and uh, it's brought a lot to me and. I'm just happy to be back out here with the guys just running around a little bit. you feel like you're over the injury for the most part? Yeah, for the most part, definitely. I mean, I've, it's not its not like I haven't played through pain, so, you know, I'm not really worried about it. Uh. What have you seen from some of the young guys on the D-line as you try to develop some depth there while you've been? Man, uh, they're tough. They're tough, man. Um, 
nobody really complains in the in the younger group. Uh, everybody just does their job to the best of their abilities. Of course, like there's things to clean up, but that's why we have training camp, you know. And um, everybody's focused. Everybody's humble and hungry. So uh, it's it's awesome be, uh, just being able to see them. And um, we got people like Grove and Buck. That's uh, the leaders in the room. And uh, yeah, they're just kind of like leading the way and uh, just showing them what to do and what not to do. Is, is there a chemistry that you guys need to build up here just in terms of when guys are going to do what next to you? What do you mean? Like, you know, if you know, Buckner wants to go outside and how you're going to come in off of him, working off of him, that kind of thing. Is that, do you guys have chemistry you have to build too? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, because uh, still my first year. Uh, with the team, so there's definitely a chemistry that needs to be built, but that's what we have training camp for. And uh, me and him, we're like, we're always talking about things that we could do to basically like change it up just so that people don't get a read on us. And uh, doing the same with Quiddy and uh, Grove as well, and uh, Dio. Uh, so I'm just trying to make sure that I know everybody and how they rush, and uh, we can all complement each other and just get after the quarterback. You've been excited to play next to a guy like DeForest. Uh, it's just been one day. Do you get a sense of kind of how fun that's going to be? Oh, it's going to be fun. He's going to clean a lot of things up for me. So, <laughs> uh, but I, I know that uh, most most of the time the slide is going to go his way. So, uh, I'm I'm expecting the ball to come my direction as well, uh, or just whatever direction that he's at. So, um, I already seen how how he plays. I, I've known about him for a long time. Respected him for a long time, you know, and uh, it's just great to be able to play with him. What's it like having Taekwon back out there? Oh, man, he crazy, man. He, he he a dog, man. He a dog. He got the neck roll on. You seen him. You know, he brought the energy out there today, man. So uh, the D-line definitely turned up uh, just seeing him back, and we know the, uh, the work that he put in to get back here. So we're just excited to have him back, and um, he's going to make plays. Can't wait for that. How big is he just for the D-line? He's the energy, man. Like everybody else is kind of mellow a little bit, but he just he just been bringing that fire out of people, man. Every time like you hear him that that I heard him talk today, I was like, oh yeah, we all won today. So he definitely fired us up uh, a lot more today. So I'm glad to have him back, and the whole team is glad to have him back. Speaking of fire, what is it like to have another fiery guy behind you in Shaq? Obviously being very vocal. Man, I lo I like him. I like him. I like how he plays. He plays fast. He plays aggressive. You know, but under control at the same time. And uh, he trusts us to uh, do our job up front, so we can just make it easier on him. And we know he's gonna play sideline to sideline. So um, I know that uh, me being back here today, I gotta uh, build trust in the in the team as well. So um, I'm I'm glad just to, to be playing in front of him because I know if I make a mistake, he's gonna have my back. What's going on? How has it been just getting acclimated in your first training camp and also trying to add more depth to the defensive line? Yeah, just trying to get better every day. You know, each week, really every day, I'm trying to focus on, you know, attacking, trying to do my job, focusing on one thing and, you know, get better at every day. So I think it's been good. You know, it's definitely been hard transitioning, but, you know, I'm not here because it's easy, you know. So just trying to focus on that and, you know, getting better every day. What is the hardest part just of making that transition as a rookie? Uh, I would just say just the intensity and obviously level of competition. You know, guys are a lot better. Um, guys, you know, come in doing what I'm doing, trying to get better at what their, you know, you know, their responsibility. Yeah. So these offensive linemen are studying me the way I'm studying them. So um, I would say that's the biggest difference. What would constitute success in the first preseason game? First preseason game. So this Saturday, huh? Uh, I would just say uh, just getting better, really. Just focusing on certain things like getting off the ball, getting off the ball, you know, making sure I'm striking my man, um, you know, just trying to be consistent with that. So that's kind of. You know, going back to his question, just trying to focus on, you know, that one thing to get better at, and that's going to be like my mindset. So, what does that be like to run out on the field in your first game? I mean, it's a different level. Yeah. The first time you get to experience this. I think it'll be really fun. I mean, it's game day, so you got to have fun on game day. So, you know, we practice hard so we can play the game. So the game is supposed to be fun. So that's kind of my mindset there. What are some of the things you picked DeForest Buckner's mind on about playing defensive tackle? Yeah, I mean, just being physical, staying on your track. You know, using your length to get off blocks. And shedding off blocks, you know. Obviously, watching him practice, you know, I'm, I'm able to learn kind of what he does well and trying to apply that to my game. So he's he's been a great example for me. Is it nice that they mostly let you stay inside and focus on one thing as opposed to moving all over time? Uh, it's definitely easier because I'm focused on one thing, you know. Um, so I, I'm not gonna say it's nicer, but it's definitely easier for sure. Just being able to focus on one thing, honing on that thing, instead of, you know, maybe 
focusing here on for three technique and then here for defensive end, I just have to focus on three technique. So. What kind of things have you learned from DeForest Buckner so far? Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, just, you know, using my length to get off blocks, you know, staying on my track, being physical, um, and then just anticipating, you know, different things offensively, like all, different things the offense is doing that could help me out. So. Is, is this is this scheme different from Northwestern? Is it similar, like what they ask you to do? Because I know this one, they're pretty much just asking you to get off the ball and get it. Get in the right, exactly. You know, it's definitely a little different. I mean, still like the same 4-3 type of style, yeah. but this is more, you know, attack uh -huh. rather than kind of like, I would say, Control your gap in a sense, in a way, in a way. Is it is it hard to learn? Is it hard to like? You've been in that scheme so much where you're controlling your gap. Is it hard to kind of reset yourself and just be like go 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 on every snap? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's why you know every day we're out here practicing, focusing on those little things. Like I'm focused on simple things of just you know getting off the ball. You know that's something simple, but that's something I have to get better at. So I would I would say so. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Appreciate you guys.